Hey guys, what's going on? Gunner here, and today I have a, a really simple eye candy variation for you, designed for channel cats. So I, I got to fish the eye candy this weekend uh, for for smallmouth opener. Um, they the smallmouth were kind of slowed, shut down. They didn't really want to chase. I put on an articulated jigging leech, which is what the eye candy is. Uh, caught some fish. It, it fished absolutely awesome and I fished the rabbit uh, zonker tail version um, and I, I kind of wanted to simplify it I wanted to uh, add a permanent wiggle tail increase the hook size uh, without uh, kind of extending the shank or articulating it so I wanted a more durable system for larger species like channel cats which in my river can be anywhere from two three pounds up to 15 pounds right so I wanted to kind of upgrade from that size four uh, A-Rex Light Stinger up to a size 1. This is a, a Predator uh, trailing hook from A-Rex Hooks. It's the trailer hooked PR383 uh, in size 1. And, and the reason why I wanted that upgrade is because you know you're talking about a, a, a 10, 15 uh, pound channel cat. You need a pretty serious hook on here. This is actually designed for pike rigs. So like Nicholas Bauer style pike rigs. Um, but I'm obviously using it in a swing application. Now it's a short shank octopus style uh, hook. And, and the reason why I, I put it on a shank is so that this can articulate. So the whole thing is, is when you're swinging a fly or dredging a fly and you're presenting it tail first to a fish and that fish comes up and nabs this, say this is part in and part out of his mouth, if you use a long shank hook that fish can get leverage on that hook shank to unhook itself. So by putting it on a shank and extending the, the trailer hook with wire, this can now articulate freely uh, so a fish cannot get leverage to throw the hook. So I'm gonna walk you guys through this. It's super simple and again, it has a fixed wiggle tail. So one of the reasons why I did a fixed wiggle tail is because there's two products currently on the market that I can get my hands on. This is one of them, but this is called a snap four tail. You can see this guy here. This is a snap for tail. It's the, it's the smaller one. And then they have a snap for hook. And basically the snap for hook is a modified, it has a modified split ring loop in it so that the two can be threaded onto one another. Now I've fished with that, that system uh, and, and I've had some wiggle tails, you know, I've, I've casted them for three, four, five hours and they're still on there and they look great and there's no following or tangling or anything like that. And I've also casted them for 10 minutes and had a tail come off. So that's not okay with me. Um, so I'm currently looking uh, for some, from some different methods. So this tail is, is fixed. It's not gonna be able to come off this fly. This fly depends on this tail. So this is a Palo uh, wiggle tail. It's a, uh, I don't know how to pronounce the last name. Sorry, Paolo. But this is a Paolo wiggle tail from Italy. Now what these are is they are a metallic coated suede material, uh, similar to like a Cohen's creature tail. They're designed slightly differently. They're a little bit thinner and they don't absorb uh, nearly as much water so they're quite a bit easier to cast and I'm gonna tie this on actually backwards So I have a snap for tail which has this hoop on it uh, designed to keep the tail in place I have it secured by the eye and I'm gonna flip it upside down so you can see my hoop is pointed down I'm gonna take my tail Use my nail to pinch that to the side. I'm currently using a monofilament thread which is going to be clear I could also use black or something get like two securing wraps on that and then pinch that and then you want to walk your thread back so that it's underneath that hoop and that that won't come off of there and so these tails being they're suede right metallic suede that's relatively important if you ever try to take like a mr twister tail or something that's rubber and put it on a fly your tying thread will cut straight through that you cannot use those it's nearly impossible 
and they're also really heavy and really thick. They're designed to be cast on spin rods. Oftentimes, the, the rubber used uh, in the tail is enough weight to be cast so that you, you don't even have to you know put them on a jig or some type of, of keeled rig uh, to, to throw that. So that's our wiggle tail. That's a size medium, by the way, and this is obviously a holographic black. This is kind of in like a leech, uh, it's supposed to be a leech color combo, so. I'm gonna let that dry for a second. And then I'm gonna come in. This is the size one Predator trailer hook. Again, it's 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 designed for pike rigs, right? And it's a nice uh, hook eye up. That's important, right? So we get it to ride correctly. And I'll show you how to rig that. It's also barbless, which I think is super prime. They also have a, a barbed option, but I pinch them anyway, so. Barbless, uh, size one Predator trailer hook. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in with monofilament and I'm gonna leave some room behind the hook eye to thread our, our wire through to attach to our flyman shank. Put down a good thread base. Again, I'm using monofilament. It doesn't, you could use uh, any, any thread for this, but I like the mono because it runs clear. And I'm gonna come in with Greg Senyo's intruder hook wire. And this is the largest size. Um, and I, just from touching it, it's about 0 .0 one eight inch diameter which is equivalent to about 30 pound test wire i this is not the right step <laughs> remember those facts because that'll come into play this is just normal uh, articulation wire that i use from it's it's beetle on 0 0.024 inches now i want this hoop sorry for that confusion misdirection but i want the hoop that i'm going to make i'm basically going to art articulate my tail the same way you'd articulate a hook and i want my hoop to run uh, hor like level, horizontal, right? So I had this wire on top. I'm gonna run that back. And that wire, let me, just got away from me a little bit. When I tie and film, I turn off my, my tying lamp and it's really hard to see. But that wire is on, on my side of the hook. You can see it's, it's on my side of the hook. It's not perfectly level. And I'm just going to take a 3D bead. This is from Hairline. It's a 3D bead. You can use uh, kind of any beads, but this is about a six millimeter bead. So if you have smaller beads, you can use two of them. And I, I think this spacing is pretty appropriate. And what I'm going to do, because we're going to run this hook point up to be dredged, right on bottom, just off of bottom, and I have a fish coming up and coming over that. I want to hook up presentation because I'm kind of fishing at eye level. I'm not really swinging this above a fish. So I want my hoop to be pointed in the opposite direction of my hook. And that's that helps it uh, tangle, and I'll go over a different principle real quick. But I'm just gonna thread that through, make sure my wire doesn't twist, and pin that to the other top. So my wire is riding directly on top of this hook shank. You can see I'll flip that up. My hoop is absolutely perfectly level and that allows my tail to run vertical. Does that all make sense? I will show you this in a different close up here shortly. These, by the way, I'm tying with a, a Deer Creek four inch razor scissor. I <laughs> These are crazy sharp. I have I don't think I've ever tied with scissors that are this sharp. And the more, more important thing is, um, I don't think I've ever had a scissor that fits as well in my hand. They're super comfortable, which is more important to me. Um, so I'm, I'm quite impressed with these. I'm used to a four and a half inch hair scissor. So the blades are a little shorter than I'm used to and I might have to get used to that, but. Uh, overall, this is these are, are pretty wicked sweet. So, so we have this hook. Our 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 tail. When we tied the tail onto the on the snap for tail, we tied it on uh, so that the the the. I don't know how to show you guys all of this stuff. What is important? So this hook is going to be inverted. Did I do this backwards? No, I did not. Momentary lapse of, of, con of judgment there. So this is going to ride vertical, extended off our shank. This wiggle tail has a hoop. You can see this is the hoop. That hoop naturally 
wants to ride down. It's kind of like a hook keel. It just That's how the mass is distributed. This wants to stay in this position. If you basically, even if this was hooked down, I would still want my hoop down because if it'll it'll stop it from following is kind of what I'm trying to tell you. At rest, I want it so that my hoop relaxes in the downward position because that's how it's going to want to cast and that's how it's going to want to fish. And this keeps it from following while you're casting. It's not perfect. It, it'll follow up once in a while, but that is the most uh, kind of efficient way I have found for attaching the tail. So the tail no matter, it, it doesn't matter if the hook's up or down, I always want my hoop down. So because this is going to be inverted, I want my hoop down. Does that make sense? And then the way we achieve that is by doing a horizontal loop with the wire because the, the loop and the, the hoop of the wiggle tail and, and the uh, snap for tail are in the same direction, orientation. Man, that was a lot of explanation. We haven't even done anything. Just talking away. I'm gonna let this super glue dry. So we're gonna extend this off of uh, Flyman Fishing Company's Greg Sanyo Articulated Shank. This is for salmon and steelhead. This is the 25 millimeter version. And I've tied on a handful of shanks. Um, and these Flyman shanks are without a doubt my favorite because this, uh, basically what they did is they took like their normal articulated shanks and they and they, they, they made them out of a thicker, uh, basically m uh, more durable wire. So it's just a heavier gauge, solid wire. Um, and, and I'll show you the way we're going to articulate this, but this double hoop in the front, you can see how this wire doubles back. That's for the attachment of lead eyes and that, and that, that double thickness allows you to alt, like secure the crap out of lead eyes. They're not going anywhere. And this hoop in the back, you can see the wire comes back underneath and that's gonna be super important because what we're gonna do is we're gonna split uh, in between those two wires. That's where our, our, our articulation wire, that Greg Sanyo's articulation wire is gonna come in and rest perfectly in between and split that hoop so that that hook rides in line uh, with our shank. So that's all kind of important. I'll cut this to the right length here. So I'm going to take my, my Sanyo's wire. I'm going to thread it through my hook eye. And you can, you can do this later. I actually I tie with this uh, on the shank just so I know my spacing's right. Because I, I don't do this often. <laughs> So, we want this riding hook up. You can see my tail hoop is riding down. That's all good to go. I have that articulated through there just with a simple loop to loop so that it rides in line. And then I'm going to split this wire over top of my hoop. So you can see I have one wire on either side. Does that make sense? And that's going to want to naturally rest at that midpoint of that two wire connection. And I want this to be kind of a short connection. I'm not looking for this to be super long. I just want enough room for that hook to be able to articulate and, and move freely so that a fish cannot gain leverage over the system to throw that hook. And then I'm going to pin that to the side with some very secure wraps. Walk them underneath so that they run on the bottom. And then to hold a 15 pound cat, what we're going to do is we're going to run these wires up through the hook eye, shank eye. Pull as much tension on them as you can and secure those back down. Now I am going to hit this with some super glue, but before I do, I'm going to attach my lead eyes. So the one thing with the eye candy, the eye candy uses medium lead eyes, just kind of generically. Um, and, and I noticed, because I have a wiggle tail variation, that the wiggle tails add a ton of water drag and that that's good right we're fishing for uh, a species that's going to be deep it's in, in in lower light conditions that tail's going to move water and send off vibrations that's key right and something that i noticed is because of that push of water um, that the medium lead eyes with the wiggle tail sink way slower than um, without the wiggle tail with the rabbit zonker variation. So something that I'm doing is I'm putting on size large lead eyes. Now this is intended to be fished in probably 10 to 15 foot of water. Um, 
at that depth you'll probably want either a sink tip for kind of swinging or dredging or like a sink three line for a moderate fast uh, retrieve. If you want a faster retrieve you go to a sink five, slower retrieve, intermediate or a sink tip. Um, and when I'm fishing kind of 10 feet or less, maybe 8 feet zone, I'll fish it on a floating line. Obviously this is all dependent on current flows. If you have a lot of current, you gotta, you gotta change that system up. But uh, the way I fished the eye candy this weekend is on a floating line with a long leader, like an 8 foot leader, 9 foot leader. And, and you use that floating line so that your line's not down on the bottom dragging on boulders or trees or anything like that. And you don't hurt your fly line. And that way when your line's above your fly and you animate it, it's a vertical jigging approach instead of if, you're, if your line sinks with your fly, it'll just pull your fly uh, laterally. So that's all attached, good to go. I'm happy with it. Our hook's riding perfectly point up. Everything's in line. Our lead eyes, this upturn eye is going to help help orient that fly, putting weight below the eye. Um, and that's all golden. Good to go. And I'm going to hit that with some super glue. And then we'll tie this fly, which will not take long to tie. Rigging, all this rigging steps is, is kind of the most time consuming thing. And something I forgot to mention, this is, you'll want to know this, uh, the wiggle tails are made in Italy, right? They're, they're an Italian made product from Palo. Uh, you can get them from Italy, but there's a North American distributor, which is Rapex Fly Fishing, R-A-P-A-X Fly Fishing, based out of Toronto. Um, and that's who I get all of my wiggle tails from. So go check out Rapex uh, to tie some of these up and, and check these out. So. What I'm going to do is, this is just an eye candy. So if you know the, the recipe, you're golden, you're good to go. But I'm going to come up, this is an EP Foxy brush. This is an EP Sparkle brush. They're in black and black and purple respectively. I'm going to pin these guys to the sides. Walk that back to my hoop so that it covers a portion of my hook, but it's not, that hook is close enough, right, that uh, it's going to get kind of hidden by the brushes, but it's not so close that the brushes are going to follow on it or tangle or anything. And that hook's just far back enough that it can articulate. So there's kind of a fine position where you want that. I'm just going to grab these guys, and we're going to simultaneously, so I have both of them tied in, and I'm just going to preen these off to the side, and then we're going to walk this forward. One clean, hard wrap right at the back, again, to cover that, that wire and that hook. And the nice thing about leaving the hook on, because it's barbless, if you hook yourself, you're, it'll just fall right out. You'll just have a gaping hole in your hand. <laughs> you can take the hook off. I just, I don't know. I don't. But what is that? Three wraps, four wraps. When I get up to the eyes, I'm going to put two uh, th stiffer wraps right at the head of this to kind of build a little teardrop. Got some fibers that are getting tangled on me. Walk that through one more time, and then I'm happy with that. Just make sure that your thread's not trapping down a whole bunch of fibers. You can see I wrap my thread through the brush, and then I just preen up on it. Switch hands, add some tension to that. Bring your thread so we have two wraps over the wire, two wraps in front of the wire. Throw in a half hitch with a nice amount of tension. And then we'll come in, we'll cut these brushes off. But leave, you want to leave a tag end of wire so that you can come up here and trap these down. We'll trap them down with some figure eight wraps. So that that's super tight to the shank, nice and durable, not going anywhere. And then you just come through with the $1 Walmart special, which is probably the most underrated fly tying tool. I'll tell you what, a comb. I use a comb more than I use anything. I love combs. They make my flies look nice. And then we're going to come in with some kind of just hot spots, little trailing legs, things to send off vibrations. I have Greg Senyo's fusion foil legs, uh, kind of in a, a purple foil, something like that. And I want these to be decently long. You can see I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use almost at full length, just far back enough that they they won't tangle on that hook again. You don't want anything tangling on that. You want this to be good to go as soon as it's in the water. But far back enough that they're just 
back there making noise and moving around and stimulating some catfish whiskers because that's what it's all about. And I just lightly, very lightly uh, pin those to the side. Just split them. Add some tension to that. I'm going to come in with a dubbing loop. Two, throw my thread around my, my loop there two times, one time, I don't think it matters. Add some tension down, move your thread up to just behind the eye. Come in with a, a dubbing loop tool. This is Kelly Gallup's uh, Shepherd's Hook dubbing loop tool from Rising. And then I'm just going to half hitch twice. Now the head, all the head is, is, is ice dub uh, and a dubbing loop. That's it. Super simple. Um, and, and what I like to do is, I don't like to buy a whole bunch of colors and stuff, I just get one of these dispensers. And I, I do a blend almost every time. Do some black, a little bit of peacock, uh, the brown, the brown metallic's kind of a long straight fiber that'll help you get some length into it. Um, yeah, maybe we can do a little bit of copper, just some sparse copper. I do the blends differently every time. I don't really think it matters. I just like to fill in the head. But <laughs> I just blend all this together in my hand. And then I'll stick that in the dubbing loop and twist that up. If you've never done a dubbing loop before, I have a, a tutorial that's geared more towards pike fishing. Um, but it's called like a, a dubbing loops and a, a freestyle pike fly. So go check that out. That'll explain... Uh, this this kind of technique that I'm doing right here. But I'm going to stick this material between the, the loop of my thread here. Distribute that evenly so that we have nice, uh, long, consistent, uh, equal kind of distribution so that we can trap these fibers down, make a nice durable head. And I'm not doing this with any wax or anything. Just all natural. And I like to spin that up kind of manually, slowly, adding tension to it. I'm pulling this towards myself as I'm spinning it. Once it's about halfway, come in with the comb. You can use a bodkin, you can use uh, Velcro. I find the Velcro to be a little bit too aggressive um, at the at early stage. I tend to break out fibers and such. That's just me. Probably wouldn't happen if I used wax, but I don't, I don't really care. <laughs> then we'll just spin this up again. Kind of do like the finishing touches here. And I'm tying with a 150 strand GSP. Um, you can use, you know, a 140 power thread, a 210 ear, or a 210 denier thread, flat wax, nylons, whatever. Any type of kind of large predatory thread. Whatever you want to do. Use whatever you want to do. But I'm using a 150 uh, Vivas uh, GSP. So I print that off to the side. Make sure you don't trap your rubber legs. And basically all I'm going to do is We'll kind of hackle, maybe two, we'll go for three full wraps behind the eyes, coming up underneath the eyes, two in front. And we're going to walk this in front. And again, this isn't really about creating a big bulky head or a big bulky profile. It's just filling up uh, the kind of front of this hook and, and cleaning this up. and hiding all this stuff up here. It's really, that's all it is. It's not super important. Something about the eye candy though, if you do tie one, you can, it's a great sculpin pattern. Just put like a Flyman Fishing Company uh, sculpin helmet on it and boom, it's a sculpin pattern. You know, tie it in the olive, you're golden. <laughs> super uh, simple variation that can go a long way. The white one, um, I'd like to keep the lead eyes, but you could use like a medium uh, bait fish head. That'd be pretty sweet too. And if you put a dubbing collar on it, you could use a fish mask and you'd have a, a weightless articulating fly. So it's it's quite a, a an easy bug to tie variations of. I have a cut on my finger from finger whip finishing so much. But that's it. That's the bug. Super simple. Come through with your comb. Uh, pick out that, that kind of dubbing head and again it doesn't, you know, 
it's not supposed to be super bulky. This fly and eye candies in general are supposed to be uh, very thin. They don't trap or hold a lot of water. They don't, um, and it, it's so the lead eyes can pull that fly down. And I talked about how the, the eye candy with the wiggle tail drops a little bit too slowly. It's, it's perfect for shallower rivers, you know, trout fishing especially, especially um, kind of jerk strip active retrieve. But if you need to dredge it, the the medium eyes are just a little bit too too soft to dredge it. So I, I upgraded to, to large lead eyes on this bug. So there she is. That's the catnip for you. It's a permanent kind of wiggle tail swing and stinger uh, style fly. Size one predator trailer hook, PR three eight three large lead eyes. Super simple body recipe, um, and yeah. So, hopefully, I don't know if it'll be this weekend or next weekend or what, but I'll be out trying to figure out some channel cat spots and dredging this guy, and uh, hopefully there'll be a, a video showcasing some Minnesota channel cats on the on the fly. So, thanks for watching. Hopefully, you, you like that. Again, it's a totally predatory bug. You could fish that for, for walleyes, you could fish that for smallmouth bass, channel cats, uh, trophy brown trout, whatever, whatever. They, it's, all, it's all good and they all eat it. Um, but yeah, that's what it's designed for, channel cats. Deep water, dredging, swing style, no leverage on that hook, wiggle tail, whisker ticklers right there. That's what that's all about. <laughs> and then just a, a flashy uh, leech body. So thanks for watching. Again, check that out. You know, wiggle tails, the Apollo wiggle tails from Rapex Fly Fishing, uh, Flyman Fishing Company, 25 millimeter uh, Senyos articulated shank. Nice heavy gauge uh, shank. It's adaptable for every vice uh, with that back hoop. Your wire splits that hoop so it rides in line, and you get that upturn eye, which is perfect for kind of dredging and jigging. Um, and yeah. That's what's going on. That's the catnip for you. And uh, have a good day, guys.